Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Good morning, viewers and subscribers. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan LFC. Back again, guys. Another top shelf interview for you guys. People, we have the top regular girls, top midfielder, Marla Sweatman. People, last week, the people them killed me, say, me unfair to the regular girls, and me now want to interview regular girls and all of them stuff there. No, you have it, people. We have Marla Sweatman is here. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Hello. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate you taking the time out, you know, you could uh, even do some training or, uh, you know, doing some studying, but, you know, you take the opportunity to come and sit down and speak to us. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Very happy to be here and share okay. my story. Yeah, no problem. First and foremost, tell us, a little, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, reggae girl Marlo Sweatman. I'm a midfielder. I've been with the Federation for 11 years now. I started in the U20s um, and then obviously made my way to the, the full team. And I've uh, been playing pro now in Europe for five years after I graduated before in uh, the U.S. with the degree university. Okay, fair enough. But where are your background? Um, oh, oh, you represent Jamaica. Is it your father or your mother? My mom. So my mom is Jamaican. My mom's side also as well. Uh, she was born and raised in Kingston. Uh, my dad's American, so half and half, but uh, definitely my mom's side is Jamaican. Okay. I was really up that you went to a United States um, under 18. Um, why you choose Jamaica? Why you choose to come and represent for Jamaica, not the United States, at a such young age? Yeah. Um, so I, I went into camp with Jamaica, and then after that, I guess I got the, the eyes from the U.S. team as well. Um, so they called me in the camp, but I, uh, for me, I just, I had something for, in my heart about the country of Jamaica and I just loved to represent my mom's side. Um, and I wanted to be a part of, a part of a federation or a system that wants to see growth. And, um, I wanted to be a part of something special. And so my goal from being very young was to, to qualify the girls for the world cup and, and to really make steps with the federation. So that's why I chose to play for Jamaica and be a part of something special. Okay, the first time you put on the Jamaican color, um, on the debut, you score, um, you play in the under 20, you kept in the under 20. What is it like first time putting on the Jamaican jersey score and, and play such a wonderful game in the midfield? 
It was great. Um, anytime I put on the Jamaican jersey, I'm just so proud to be able to wear the crest on my chest. Uh, and obviously to score at the same game was just was just a, a big deal for me. It's kind of a reward of all the hard work being paid off. Okay, fair enough. But um, playing for Jamaica, how oh, difficult it is playing for Jamaica? Um, what are your, um, your friends say in the United States when you make the decision to come and play for Jamaica? What are the feedback you get? Everyone was excited. Um, they were really happy, obviously, to represent represent such an amazing country like Jamaica, but to be represent my mom's side and, and just to be a part of something so special. They were all supportive. Okay. So at what age you start to play football? At what age you start to get to bring it in football? Is it your father play football? Is it your mother or our? Yeah, so my dad played football. Uh, not at a professional level or anything, but uh, when I was four. And my dad was my coach, and he always supported me and pushed me really hard to, to reach my goals. And I remember when I was little, I was about, I think, six, I told him I wanted to be a professional player. And whenever times got hard, he always said, I remember you told me this, and so I'm always going to push you to reach your goal. And he never let me give up or, or let me never let me slack. When did you start up? Because, you know, speaking to Tiffany Cameron, she said when she started out, she played left back, she played right back. Like, we know you play central midfield, hard tackle inside the midfield. But when you start out, which position you, you start out first? Or it's just defensive midfield? Uh, I was always midfield. I was more attacking when I was little. And then as I went off to, to university, I kind of went back in the defensive midfield. And now I'm back in the attacking midfield. So always a part of the midfield. Okay, so what are the, the technical ability in need, especially, you know, watching you playing in the World Cup, or do you, you jump back in the back four, sometimes the, the, the two center backs um, spread wide and you come inside the midfield. And what are the, 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 the technical ability you need to play defensive midfield? If a young female is watching this interview, what advice would you give to them? Uh, definitely composure is, is very important um, to be composed on the ball, but also to be able to read the game, set the tempo of the game, uh, not just read your own team and your own game, but the other team and see, okay, in, in this moment, it seems that our team's a bit panicking. We need to relax a bit. So in, in such a moment, I'll slow down the game. I'll drop back in the four and just swing the ball around or see that, uh, you know, our team has some energy and we're starting to attack and then start playing forward. So really, I think just having the overall uh, education smart for the game and to be able to read the game and then dictate the tempo off of that, which I think is super important. And then obviously just being a technical player, um, being able to play under pressure and have a good touch and, and yeah, so. Yeah. But tell me something, how important it is for communication inside that midfield though? I think it's everything. Uh, the midfield, like I said, you have to dictate the game and that is not only when you have the ball, when you don't have the ball. Um, and that can come from communication, so. So telling players where to move and seeing the seeing the play before it happens and setting up runs behind, um, I think it's super important, the communication. Okay, fair enough. So if it wasn't for football, right, mm -hmm. what would you do? Because you went to college. What what would you do? What what what, what are your, your strongest point? What, what, what's your degree uh, specialist? Yeah, so I have a degree in crime and law. Um, but, uh, if it wasn't for football, I don't know. I never thought about that. For me, it was always football. Um, I probably want to do something with modeling or photos, but, uh, I, yeah, I never really thought about that because there was no other option for me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But you have some very good pictures so that could work. You know, you could be, uh, a nice man. Probably you need to come and model for Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the goal is to come down in, in the winter and take my, my off season there for a bit. So I'll look into some opportunities. Oh, you, you, you always come to Jamaica for holiday? No, no, no. Just that's what I want to do this, this winter with my mom. I want to take a special trip down there. Okay. How often you come to Jamaica, do? Uh, unfortunately, with my schedule, just when we have camp. Um, but uh, obviously the girls have been called into camps around the world and haven't really been back in Jamaica for a while and I haven't been called in, um, unfortunately, for a bit. So I just come down when we have camp. Yeah. So um, how do you feel now? You know, you're a part of the, the success of the Reggae Girls team from way back when, from the first World Cup, starring in the midfield. How do you feel as a person to know that 
the team actually in the World Cup and you are not there? Huh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm just super proud of the girls. And for me, Jamaica is so big in my heart that there's no other option but to be happy. Um, but with that, to be honest, like obviously it was hard to not be a part of the squad and to be what I would say at uh, my top form and to not be a part of the squad was it was heartbreaking. Um, but uh, I've been able to overcome it and and to look back at my um, my career. I don't think my career with Jamaica is done. At least I don't want it to be done. But to look back so far and to see how much I've been involved, I can be nothing but proud of myself and, and proud of a country and, and support such a country. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy with everything that's going on right now. At what age you went to the World Cup? Uh, phew, that was four years ago. I was, I think, 24, is it? About 24. 24? Yeah. Wow. Are you still look like you're 22? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, what, what keep you going to still love the game and not have, have that passion for the game, especially starting out so early? Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it was easy and it was all all flowers the whole way through flowers and rainbows there's definitely it's ups and downs but i think just the women's game is so different than the men's game i don't want to say men do it for money but i want to say that they have a lot more benefits whereas some players playing abroad you don't get paid the same way men's get paid so there's it's only coming from the heart uh, so i would just say playing every day from the passion doing it from your heart and really loving the game um, it definitely is what kept me going. You talk about um, men's a while ago, about uh, you don't want to get into detail. But, you know, as a past player, you know, I, I play the game and, you know, sometimes I have a difficult, difficulty to get certain things, playing in Jamaica. But, you know, especially listening to not only the Jamaican story, but the whole um, saga with a lot of administration across the world. How difficult this is, for females like you know i really really like for you to explain like some of the challenge not just jamaica but overall with women females out yeah um i mean obviously i think in any federation there's there's what you can call problems or, or obstacles and i think what i can speak on in the women's game is that there's just a lot of sometimes uncertainty um let's just talk about professional and not the top leagues. Not, we're not talking about England first division and stuff like that, but let's talk about, um, I don't know. I'm just going to throw a country out there, Switzerland or Romania, Serbia, like these, these smaller countries. There's some professional teams that you have a contract and sometimes you go six months without being paid, at least on the women's side. And, and I can't speak for, thank God this hasn't happened for me. And I can't speak for the men's side, but uh, you know, there's situations like that that happen. And um, it's in those moments where you just have to stick it out and you really test your love for the game. And without the payments, maybe I have to work another job. Am I still going to play or, or what's going to happen in this case? So, I mean, and then you look back at, at situations that have happened with the reggae girls as far as being at camps and they've paid for their own, their own luggage or haven't been reimbursed or even sometimes they haven't even gotten the, the money that's promised. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a wide range of of obstacles that happen in, in football and specifically speaking about women's football. But I have a lot of hope that that it's going in the right direction. You guys making the sacrifice for the next generation. Exactly. Whoa. But you know what kind of struck me? I'm not talking about the federation. I'm talking about okay. clubs. What kind of struck me is that sometime, you know, in not particular country, but in general, mm -hmm. girls would go like six months without pay. In, in these leagues, in these clubs, Mm -hmm. That kind of surprised me. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of people don't see that. And, and for example, I had a game, was it Wednesday, was it? Uh, we played the first division team in, in Austria, yeah. not to mention Champions League, and we had to play in the evening because players are rushing from work. Oh, so, really? Yeah, how, how you have it that the first division in yeah. a great country that's playing Champions League, they're playing, they're working two jobs, Uh so, I mean, it just goes to show that they come from work, they're absolutely exhausted, and they're still giving 100% and they're giving it with all their heart and, and making the results happen. So, I think women's football has a lot of, a lot of area to grow, but they're definitely going in the right direction. 
Wow, wow. Boy, I may tell you, that's why it's very important, you know, to speak to the females them to see some of the things that they're going through because we on the outside beating, you know, a lot of people say, yo, we're supporting, we want them to get better. And, you know, what speak to me about um, FIFA is with these payments. Like, I'm so happy, you know, because one of the things that one of my brethren telling me that Prince, that what FIFA did in this World Cup, they look at some of the clubs, how much they pay the players, and kind of some players get 15, some players get eight, a different price range, but they put it like 30,000. I'm saying, well, that's a lot of money, but Prince Ryan, no, where it coming from? This is a start of something is great. Yeah, and that's definitely true of what he said. I mean, it is just the beginning, um, and there's a lot of lot of growth to happen. And I think what FIFA does is amazing, where they do look at all those areas, and they are. I think FIFA really does want the best and really wants football to grow. And so I can really, you know, be thankful for for such a federation, such a out like a big a big place like that to be looking out for women's football. Um, and I think it's yeah it's great you know one of the things I have to go back to that question I'm gonna ask you and it kind of blew my mind away like you have your degree right but uh -huh. you feel like you, you're telling me that you don't think about any job boss football that kind of crazy to me to know that you're, you're very smart and intelligent and yeah. yeah yeah I think a lot of people don't like a lot of people don't realize that I do have a degree um, I did finished university with honors um okay I, I for me football is everything and it uh i am 28 and didn't get called into the world cup team and, and you know it's saying when one door shuts another one opens so it did kind of open my mind okay what am i going to do after football if something does happen and and i do have a some some things going on right now that I'm very excited for that are in the football world as far as my future. But um, yeah, I mean, you're in a moment of your life that is very small. You can only be a professional footballer for a certain amount of years. And yeah, while probably ten years on if you're lucky you're not getting a serious injury. Yeah. So since I'm in that period of my life now, I just I just want to be zoned in on enjoy every moment of it. Okay. All right. Tell me something. You have a great. Um, career with Jamaica international team, right? From the youth level, come right up to the last World Cup, right? You're a part of history, first to do it, so that is very special, right? Yeah. But what do you think you need to do going forward? We have the um, 2024 Paris Olympic coming up. We are playing Canada, Oman away. What do you think you need to do to elevate your game, to be in the next Jamaican team, get called up? Uh well, it's something I've looked at, uh, obviously, this past year as I've been kind of, I was called into camp once and I feel like I wasn't really given a shot as, as I don't know if that's what I would consider being given a shot, but I've done everything I can. Let me tell you that. I've, I have a dietitian that writes me every day to the certain gram of what I need to eat. I have uh, perfect facilities here to train. I've been the top goal scorer I've changed positions I've done every literally I've done everything I I messaged the coach before the Amsterdam camp I was gonna say I'll literally I'll fly myself out there to give myself a chance you got no response um I I think it's out of my hands at this point um I I really have done everything and there's nothing else that I I feel like I could have done or could do to get myself in there besides it being a change in, in the coach's decision. Okay, fair enough. Sorry, sorry to hear that. That kind of touched me out a while ago, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that that kind of really touched me out. But, but tell me something. Um, you know, who are your close friends in this national team? Yeah, obviously, Trudy. Uh, we Trudy? Yeah, Trudy. I know her from way back, uh, Tiffany. Yeah. So, yeah, Trudy and I always room roommates when, when we go on the camp. Tell us something that you know that I play a, a lot of football with Trudy Carter and yeah. the road in our community down the jungle. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Blackwood, I play gym ball. I went to the same high school with her. Really? You know, and yeah, fast, quick, you know, so seeing she doing it at this level, you know, I, I, I could see that for, for a long time coming for her, right? Mm -hmm. But 
I want to ask you a question, you know, because this is the perspective with a lot of people out there. In the diaspora in Jamaica, with our men's national team, right? Mm -hmm. It's when new players coming in, um, and better players coming in. Mm -hmm. You see, the players were there for a long time. They don't feel like they should be replaced. Mm -hmm. And people always accustom and say, hey, the game of evolve, better players come in, evolve. Yeah. Just take a look at the reggae girls team. When quality and new players coming in, they just embrace them and no fuss, no problem. Is that smooth on the surface or because we don't know? Uh, within the team? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with the people that football has to evolve. Yeah. If you come in and you take my spot and I did everything I can or I'm not as good enough, then... I'm the type of person that I will say, clap to you, congratulations, you're a great player. But uh, if it's, I don't know how to say it, like, if that's not the case, yeah. if you're not better than me in every aspect, yeah. it's something else, then... You will feel away. Yeah, like, it's a bit, like, you're not going to give that spot away. But um, yeah. I would have to agree, like, football does have to evolve. Um, and I think yeah. that's the beautiful part about it. And that's what's what's growing. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I want to talk to talk to you about um, some of the talent in this team, right? I want to ask you, um, I was watching Bonisha, trust me. And this is my perspective of Bonisha. When I was playing at Arnett Garden, Jamaica under 15, under 17, under 20 play at Arnett Garden. And I'm always somewhat saying that, she just bullying everybody because she big. That was my perspective. Uh -huh. But when we really look at it, when she started to play the under 20, we realized that this girl have really raw talent. You play with her at a young age, in you know, the age group coming up in the... Do you see this in Bonisha? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, she was always a standout. You know, she's, she's amazing. And, uh, I mean, there's nothing really else you can say about it besides she's one of the best. Yeah. yeah. Oh, important is Teddy's team. She's a captain and seems like you guys have so many respect for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, she sets the tone of the camps. She sets the level. And then obviously, like, what she's doing outside the national team in her professional yeah. club is amazing. And just to see her continue to evolve and, and achieve such amazing accomplishment is, is absolutely amazing and also amazing for the country. Yeah. What why are your chief favorite player in the team? Who's my favorite player in the team? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Trudy. Trudy. Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. My and my favorite also, player, a Tiffany Cameron, still. Yeah, Tiffany as well. Um, from this tournament, you yeah. know, I really like when Washington comes on the field. I think she brings a spark. She's yeah. young, but uh, she definitely brings a spark to the field. And then I'm very, obviously, obviously very impressed as always with Swaby, um, yeah. both of them, but especially Allison. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. We know we have thirty minutes, you know. So I'm still at, I'm still on time. I still have some more minutes. So I want take to, a little bit more. Oh yeah, a little bit more time. Okay, I appreciate that. One thing I want to ask you: Reggae girls playing fantastic in the World Cup, hope against France. Brazil, last World Cup you guys play against Brazil, last Chile. Do you do do you ever see or think you guys could come out of the group, uh, out of this group and the, the performance and the issue that you guys created? Do you see in that in that in you guys from 2019? Yeah, I think that was always a part of the goal. And um I as obviously the first goal was to qualify historically. So that was checked off. We went to that World Cup. It was obviously to qualify and just to be there. And I remember when that World, uh, World Cup was finished, they said, okay, next time we're going to qualify. And we're not just going to qualify, but we're going to make a statement. And we're really going to win some games and get some points. So I have to say that what they do put their mind to, they do accomplish. Mm -hmm. And there is a goal behind everything. And, and they want to make steps. And so the first step was obviously qualify. And now we're at the second step where it's to really make a statement, which is what they're doing. So I'm not really 
I, I'm more than happy, but I'm not surprised that this is how it's going because this is what they put their minds to. They they achieve. Yeah. All right. Talk to us a little bit because um, you know that we play against Colombia. 2018, 2018, we defeat them 2-1. And in 2019, they defeat us. No, we beat them 2-1, yeah. 2018. And they defeat us 3-2. 2019. Talk us about, you know, a lot of differences make with both teams, but you know, you've been around the team that time. What What is it like playing against Colombia? What are some of the things we need to look out for for this Colombia team? Yeah, obviously, um, every country has evolved. So it's, it's going to be a totally different team than when I played them. But, I mean, they're definitely, like, a feisty team. So look out for that. And then they have speed. And they have a very good attack. Um, but what I would like to see a lot is, is a combination between Bunny and who plays attacking midfield. Um, so I think that's going to be the key is to get up top bunny the ball, play it off her and then get in behind um, and really do some combination. But also uh, they have a, a quick, quick attack and they have a very talented player, Linda, the young player. So keep an eye on her. Um, so I think this, it's going to be an amazing game. I think it's really going to be a 50-50 game. But if we attack and, and get off on the right foot, I think we have an amazing chance. Tell me something, because you're in the dressing room, you play with this team. Mm -hmm. It seems like whenever the team don't play with Bunny, we get a, the ball game kind of share. We play as a team a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We don't have a vocal player, we play to that. I understand she, she's the key player. Is it the coach tell you guys to do that? Because sometimes even when you're playing and a better option is there, we're trying to force in it to Bunny. Why we play two bunnies so, so much? And sometimes I think if we can be unpredictable, we can be a very dangerous team. Mm -hmm. It's true, yeah. I think we have a talent all throughout every position. And I think maybe sometimes we're, we get maybe a little bit stuck if we want to play to Bunny because she is the best player. But you also have to think the other team knows that and they're going to double team her. So they're going to take her out of the game. And then if you try and always force it to her, but the other team knowing where the ball is going to go, I mean, it can get a little bit like they can read it maybe. But um, no, I, I mean, as a player on the field, you have your own decisions where you want to pass and how you want to play. It, obviously, we do have a game plan going into each game. But uh, when you're on the field, it comes down to the players, how they decide. Okay, fair enough. People, come on, people. Smash a lot. Hey, listen, let me tell you that I get a lot in a call. You know? This show, when I do an interview, I get call. I don't want to keep it too long um people smash the like button um i'm going to take five cards so you guys can call in and talk to your favorite player all right so the phone line is open you guys can call in make sure if you're watching back on the replay people make sure that you hit the like button please very important subscribe to the channel and share your thought down in the comment section so the phone line is open so you guys can call back i don't want nobody say i prefer anybody may call back because i'm afraid no I am going to leave it for you guys to call. Call back and then I will answer. All right. So let's take this one. <laughs> DJ, good morning. Welcome to the show. Live on air with the regular girls midfielder. Good morning, Ryan. How are you doing? I'm doing and good. if you have the beautiful specimens of God's creation there with you, good morning, Marlo. Hello. Good morning. Right. I'm Sir W1. And um, I'm one of your, your fans on Instagram. And uh, also, you will know me too as OVTVJA. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Beautiful. Now, now, Ryan, I'll tell you this, this much. That the love I have for this lady, it goes beyond football. Trust me. Calm, cool, and collected. Smooth. And when I heard she said she would do fashion, I was like, what? Really? I've worked with, with uh, many fashion icons of Jamaica um, over the years. And trust me, Cosmopolitan magazine would sell off by, by, by millions of copies. Yes? And another thing, too. She does law, criminal law. Hmm. Um, hmm. Boy, if she just go right into that right now... I'm, I'm pretty sure the JFF would be in turmoil, and I'll leave it at that. Marlo, it's, it's, it's a pleasure seeing you. I, I, I love your work ethic. 
I know for sure that you love Jamaica and you put your all into it. I want to encourage you to continue to do what you're doing. Keep bigging up the country. Keep, keep the flag going high. Uh, like you, my, my, my belly turns when you were um, not called for the World Cup. I know where it's coming from. I know. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to dig up old, old worms. I know where it's coming from. But what I love is that you know where it's coming from too. And you held your head high above the waters and gracefully. And for that, I'm telling you, we are proud of you 100 plus percent. Keep the flag going high. I'm going to leave this space. Let others can call. Ryan, my brother, enough love. The interview stellar. Trust me. You're at your best element right now, Ryan. And we'll, we respect you for that. Marlo, kisses and hugs. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Big up yourself, Carla. See, Marlo, I tell you that you have a lot of fans. They, <laughs> I get so many beaten for you last week, you know, and they said, I'm playing with the reggae girls and stuff. So, people, the phone line is open. I don't want to call about nobody because I don't want nobody to say I'm just preferring my friends and all of these stuff. I could call you guys, in the, but you have to make the, the, the decision to call. You know what I mean? I don't want no problem in the morning still. But, um, um, you know, Maggie will be perfect for you, man. Yeah. I think that it will be a great, great, great accomplishment if you can if you can go into that. But, Carla, good evening. Welcome to the show. Good morning or good afternoon. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ryan. I check in one more time again. For uh, you see that you see something we talk about females. You see females always eat everything from the point where they come on to talk in their mind. Just like how she come on, the, you know, you have her interview and she's giving the whole details about. You can't say the female is even love the game more than the males now. You know, females love the game more than us. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Cause she express herself and she go into details. These guys are playing a lot of games without even getting paid. And as I said, most of these males that you're seeing play Premier League and so much of these guys getting so much big money and they never perform good. Because some of the time, honestly, we tell you some of the time, somebody gave my name looks so, look so powerful, some of the time, but I even want to say that. Yeah. And that's what I said. So, yeah. congratulations to she and, and I hope she can make it playing, you know, in the Olympic team coming up. So. Okay. You know, big, you know, or, you know, coming on the program and we get to even, you know, correspond with her or whatever. So, you know, seeing, uh, seeing these guys expressing themselves about oh, what they go through. You see, you see, you see, that's why Tracy needs to apologize, you know. Yeah. Oh, Tracy needs to come on theme channel and apologize because you can't see the females and them really. I get the details of what them, what them really go through. And that's what I'm going to say. So, Tracy needs to apologize to the ladies and them. Need yeah, to apologize to the lady. May I agree, agree with you, Bridget? 100% need to apologize. And that's what I'm saying. Oh, anyway, Marlo, big up to you. You know, you can't do anything you want to do, but I can't say you really love the game. You really love the game, Marlo. If you have, have, a, have a degree like that and still, you know, actually try to achieve something in football. That 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 is something for us to look as male. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, sir, so, and most of the females them that them have them degree and them have all of them stuff to them. Yes, that is the same thing I said. Uh, uh, but like like most of us males forgot about that, Bridget. We forgot about that. Yeah. Like me always I say, me have to big up to the most of the ladies of them because I grew up playing football with some of them and they were great players. Mm. So you can see where me I come from from long time say. Most of, them, most, of them, most of them guys who are jumping up on Panorama now are just attack. But me attack off a basis of growing up playing with someone, some awesome female who just love the game. Let me just love the game. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I can see that's why our team reach work up because we have a lot of ladies in Jamaica that love the game like them. It's just the opportunity for us to expose them talent to the world. And we can see it now. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, Fair man. Enough. So. Yeah, man. So, okay. big up yourself, man. I'm there. I watch a program, man. I go and, you know, go and watch a program, man. I go and, you know, take in her beauty and, you know, the way she present herself as a person. So, big up for that, my friend, you know? Yeah. So, Love respect, man. Man, big up yourself, man. Marley, they're on the bliss Jamaican YouTube show, all right? <laughs> and, 
added fans over here, you know. So I I let's call them, they call them come I get too much one ten. Uh, uh, good morning, my virgin. More prosperity and greetings, you know. Yeah. I, uh, have, respect. I have the Come females on the team. Uh, I have the females on the show, virgin. We acknowledge you, man. I acknowledge your female. Yeah. Good morning, gorgeous. How are you doing, beautiful? Good morning. Yes. Um. What is it like playing for the national squad? Uh, it's amazing. Um, I mean, it's it's obviously amazing to play football, the sport I love, but really to, to represent Jamaica is everything. So it's a great feeling. Okay. And how come you are not, not at the World, World, World Cup playing along that um, frame of most team? They are creating history and they're doing great things. How come you're not there at the World Cup? Um, uh, I would put it as it's a, it's a staff decision, and uh, this is just how they decided. And I am I'm happy to support the girls in any way I can. And it just seems as as this moment I have to support them from afar. But uh, I'm rooting for them. So yeah, what is it like, like play, playing along Bonisha? What the experience like? It's great. It's a it's it's a great experience, and I think every training, every match that I played alongside her, she just she demands the best out of each player around her, and so it elevates my own game and it elevates all our own games, um, individually and then obviously collectively as a team. So it's a great to play alongside of her. Okay, and who who is your favorite footballer of all time? Ooh, of all time, uh. I would say Steven Gerrard. Yes! 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 The greatest of all time. Yeah. You know, come on, Steven Gerrard. Really? That's strange. Okay. Yes, man. And I think that you, you should try and get back into the squad. You seem like a, a very great person. You seem very talented, you know? Because um, the, 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 the future is bright for you, and anything is po possible with, with, the, with, with the Almighty, you know. Yeah. And most of you can get there. Thank you, yeah. 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 And I wish you the best, and I, I, I hope that you, you will be back in the team, and I'm so, I'm, and I'm so glad, glad that you. Come on, you show on your gi gi given your side of the story, and you are still um sh sh showing the team kind uh, appreciation, and you're still a big the the them up. You are still giving your strength, and you're still cheering the the man. You know that's good. That that's good. Yeah, always. Yeah. yeah. See you later, all right? See you calling later tonight, all right? We have show tonight, all right? Much preview for the girls, all right? Yeah, okay then. Bless up yourself. All right. All right, people. Listen, I'm not going to keep her anymore. I think 38 minutes is good. But before you leave, I want you to give me a five aside. Jamaica. Five aside. Only five, including a goalkeeper. Five. And the best player you play with in the Jamaica national team. Here, anyway, left right side, left right side. Make it more. Uh, um, that in the left foot, nobody. Left. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Of the current team, yeah. Who you play with in the national team? Current, whatever. Your best. All right. Let's start. All right. Obviously, Spencer in goal. Yeah. Why? Um, I mean, you've just seen it so far in this yeah. World Cup, how important she is to the team. Um, but not just on the field, obviously off the field. She has a great presence, very professional, very professional. So. Mm. You know, before you go ahead, more ask a question. What do you guys tell all of these new players? Because she come in and she just have that fire in her belly. Mm -hmm. 
never die, they don't three and all. What do you guys, what, what do you guys give the new player to drink? Uh, what, what do you guys tell them <laughs> with this? What, what, we call everybody have this fire in them belly. What, what, what do you guys give them to eat or drink? Are you guys sit down with them and talk to them what the journey you guys going through before and tell them what is it like? No, I think that's just the bare requirement. To be a reggae girl, you just have to have it in you. You have to have it in your heart. Um, obviously for the reggae boys too, but I mean, speak all for the girls, I think. Just, I mean, if you don't have that passion in your heart, it's not going to work out for you in the squad. So. Okay, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. So, um, Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'll put Lauren Silver in the back. Yeah. Her from the last World Cup. Both Swabies in the center center back position. Yeah. Den Den over there. And then in the midfield, I'll put myself. So, put myself there in the midfield with Spence and... And this is off the field, just because she was such a special, special person in my Jamaican career. Shanika Williams from way back. I don't know if you, I don't know if you know her. Oh, oh, don't do me that. Of course. Yeah. So this, this, she's just a very special person in my Jamaican career. So I'll put her in there. Okay. She kept going. And then Trudy Carter, Bunny, and um, oh, I don't know. Can't leave out Tiffany, but also can't leave out Jody. Can I have 12? <laughs> <laughs> tell me how you're going to play the 12 of them, Pandy. You tell me how you're going to play the 12. You can't have 12. <laughs> I don't know. Let me. I'll put over the. Put over the Tiffany. Yeah, I'll put Tiffany there. <laughs> it's hard to pick eleven. There's so many people. If I'm just do if I'm just going off of performances, it's different than like the real sport. I don't know all you want to put in now. You have your team, you are the coach, you are the captain, you gotta tell me oh you gotta fit the twelve player and just tell me based on performance, it's up to you. Or if you want just say, Hey, we are going with four striker, we are going with twelve player. I will live with that. <laughs> I will give you a pass for that. All right, yeah. Then let me put Shanika on the bench as a... I'll put someone else in her position, just Shanika. Over, she has to be in the team for me. But, uh, yeah. Obviously not playing-wise anymore because she's not playing, but just as a special... special yeah. wagon. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I want you to do one thing before you leave for me. This is the Jamaican biggest fans on the phone. Good morning. Good evening. Go ahead. And speak to the farmer, regular girls captain for the army. Prince. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Marna Sweatman. Yeah. so nice having you on the show today. Happy right? to be here. Um, yeah, so yeah, so I'm a big fan of regular girls, you know, and I am one of the few persons that had actually watched you making the transition. <laughs> from the national junior team over to the senior team. And, you know, I, I've seen how far he has come as a, as a player for the reggae girls, right? Um, very detrimental in the 2019 campaign, you know? Um, uh, school, well, you, you came in that campaign and you actually got your first goal for the Jamaican reggae girls, you know, your first goal against Antigua, and it was actually a double. And in that same campaign, you, you came on, you came on against Chile, and you scored a one goal, you know, for us to be the Chileans. So I've been a fan throughout your journey, and you know, um, it was kind of a bit sad when I realized that you weren't going to make this campaign, but being at the age of 28. Right? I know that you at least have one more campaign that I can make a run for, right? Yeah. So, Marlo, I just want to big you up. I just want to say, continue doing what you're doing. I know that sometimes it might seem that like there's no support, right? And sometimes it might seem that 
that fan base is absent. But now the tell you say that's not true. Within the Jamaican population, there are there are still a few persons that follow you guys definitively. Whether you're playing for the national team, whether you're playing for your clubs, you man will follow you know, all around. I'm just want to say big up, just big up yourself, Marlo, and hopefully the next champion we can see you on the national team. Oh, All right. Thank you. All right, Prince. Big up yourself, brother. No love and respect. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Love. People, no more call. That's it. So, I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to be a part of my show. Each time I start it, each time I end it. So, this is what I want you to do for me. I will remove myself off the stream, and I want you to do something for me. So, this is what I want you to do for me, right? Hi, I'm Marla Sutman, Reggae Girls, top midfielder. You're watching Elite Sports with Ryan LFC to get the latest on the Reggae Girls and the Reggae Boys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Can you do that for me? All right. I may, forget. I may take a few cuts, but let me try this. All right. So um, I'm going to remove myself. Just be calm. Whenever you're ready to go, I will just edit it out. So don't worry. Just go for it. Hi, I'm Marlo Setman, Reggae Girls top midfielder. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Marlo Setman, Reggae Girls top midfielder, and you're here on Ryan FC and Elite Sports. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to keep up all to date with Reggae Girls and Reggae Boys top news. Okay, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Ian's! I beg you, cut out the party for me and send him up on WhatsApp. I need it to be, um, I need to be, have it on my show. So, Ian, I beg you, cut out the party for me and send him, come give me brother, please. Um, and also, you see the part that she made mistake, put it in there to brother. Just, <laughs> just edit it, natural, when it on TV, all right? So, I really do appreciate you taking the opportunity to come and sit down and speak to us for 47 minutes, as me say. You could uh, do something, you could have uh, chaining and stuff. Um, I hope, you know, you can bounce back from this. Um, just hold your head high and just continue to work hard and hopefully I can see you. I will definitely go to the game when Jamaica come to Canada, to the Olympic game next month. So hopefully I can see you and I can, you know, meet you in person and have an interview with you. So I want to wish you the best. And continue to doing the great job and stuff. What would you say to the Jamaican people for upcoming games and stuff? What would you say to them? I say, have no worries because we're going to make it through. Okay. And your score prediction for the game? 3 0. 3 0. Mm -hmm. Would you go all, all at all? We were defending a lot this in the first part. Would you go all attack? Uh, we have to, you know, play a disciplined game with the balance. I think if I was a coach, I would just attack. Say we have nothing to lose at this point. Um, and we should set the tone and not wait for, for them to attack us. But Are you saying there. that because he's an attacking midfielder? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Enough respect. I love you. Really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best on your journey. All right? Thanks. All right, so see you later. Peace out. Right. So reggae, girl, reggae girls and reggae boys fans, people, here you have it. Um, hopefully we can get more reggae girls player because it seems that like the reggae girls player not like to come and speak to us. Hope that's not the case. I hope they are busy. But this is my second females interview. Um, you guys can look out for a couple more, especially after the World Cup. And I have one coming up with Gregory Simmons. You know, um, that's Cameron, that I think that's going to be Monday. So you guys can look forward for that. So wish you all the best. Viewers, come on, people. The more you like the video, the more people can see the interview. We have 245 of you guys in the chat. Come on, people. Stop what you're doing, people. Like the video, people. That's more people can see when it uploads to YouTube. All right? So thank you, guys. Appreciate it. 
until next time from your boy Ryan LFC I like to say peace out thank you for watching Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.